Welcome back to the Weekly News Roundup. We are doing three sections today. We're going to do business, and then we're going to do a little bit of smart news, which is all very much just kind of smart tech business. And then we're going to end in a little bit of silly Ville. So uh, stay tuned here. We're going to start in with the business. And uh, just an update. Number one, Google completes the purchase of Fitbit. So yes, Google, which um, is owned by Alphabet, which, by the way, is now creating a health insurance company, has now purchased Fitbit. So my uh, prophetic rants from the very, very early days of tinfoil hat time back in the cringy early videos of Switch to Linux all did come true. Fitbit did indeed sell itself to the highest bidder, which happened to be an insurance company. A little bit of ways around, but it did actually get there. And so now Google has official full access to all of that health data that you guys gave it through those amazing little Fitbit apps. You guys, you had three months to delete your crap out of there before Google got its little googliness all over it. But that is all over now. Google now owns your fitness data. Good luck to you, sir and ma'ams out there with Fitbits. And another uh, another update, AT&T finally sacrifices DirecTV Now on the altar of failed Dish Network. And so AT&T uh, does announce that uh, the, the recently created, what, four years ago, um, direct TV now, which was this like a streaming, like kind of like live TV streaming type stuff. I don't know. I didn't pay much attention to this, but whatever it's dead now. So thanks at and You got rid of yet another piece of garbage. And now we're starting in on the actual news. Hey, we only had a minute and a half here. All about two minutes instead of like the four minutes on the privacy video this week. A uh, new tech places cars instrument plan panels with a holographic display. I actually think this is a cool thing. Um, as long as it has the ability to dim it, uh, you know, brighten it, dim it as needs be, maybe move it a little bit. Now, what we see here, though, is with these guys here that are propping this thing up, I think these are very distracting. Uh, so I don't really like that. I love the idea of these. So if you can figure out how to get this guy up without these obstructing the view. And since these guys are semi-transparent and if we can modify the basic look, I think that's a cool thing. Um, probably the best of the holographic technology that might be coming out soon. Uh, but it's interesting. And I don't know. What do you guys think? And uh, if you guys happen to know, where is this photo taken at? Let's see if the, the internet can identify where this photo is taken from this picture here. That'd be a, a neat thing if somebody actually knows. Um, I saw, I was watching an old unsolved mystery the other day about a, uh, a guy who broke out of jail. It turned out that it was the state pen, which is not too far from me. And uh, some of the scenery they were showing where he escaped from. Dude, I've been there before. It's like, cool, I'm in a set of unsolved mysteries, you know. So see if anybody can unsolve this mystery. Where's that strip of stretch of highway there? Uh, so anyway, let me know in the comments down below. But that's a cool, kind of a cool, cool new, uh, new technology uh, business type thing. I, I'd put that in my car as long as it wasn't tied to a bunch of other crazy, weird data collection type crap. Um, Kohler's has a brand new touchless design toilets and bathtubs for $16,000. Okay, I'm all for touchless technologies in public restrooms. If I go into the public restroom and they're like, hey, we're going to go ahead and uh, we're going to go ahead and have touchless stuff so I can go into the restroom and not touch anything. I'm all about that. But having a $16,000 touchless bathtub. Why? Why? I mean, I get this scenery. I mean, man, look, look at this guy. He's got like this, he's got the, like this, this beautiful uh, scenery overlooking a city and his full touchless bathtub with the nice purple LEDs here. Really cool set. But do we really need a bathtub and all this stuff for your own personal home? Like you just get in the shower and it just turns on. You don't have to touch anything. Like Why? Why? Am I the only one who thinks this is stupid? Uh, here's the touchless bathroom faucet. Oh, Lord, it's the intelligent toilet. Hey, Dave, I see your butt, Dave. Um, if you guys didn't see that true stream media about the um, the anal print stuff, that was a glorious, glorious true stream media video. Um, very interesting stuff. But yeah, here you go. In your own house, you, you are so terrified of anything and everything that in our own house, we need to have touchless, contactless stuff. 
Okay, sent them all over this stuff for uh, the public restrooms, but you know, we already have all this stuff in public restrooms. We don't need $16,000 for contactless stuff. This is weird. I don't know. This is getting weird. This world is getting weirder. It's getting even weirder too. Uh, Google bans Parler app after its users flock to avoid censorship. This is very interesting because what we're going to seeing here is we're actually seeing what is literally without a lot of unequivocation uh, antitrust. But do you think we actually have any form of administration or government right now that's going to support the, you know, do this? Of course not, because this is corporatocracy. And in a business world of corporatocracy, um, the businesses make the rules. So Parler, it's growing too big. Everyone in, everyone in big tech, it's growing. Kill it. And so that's what they did. They just got together and killed it. So anyway, uh, Parler, one of the fastest growing apps in the world right now, has been somewhat salvation of those. Now, this is Google. Of course, Apple kicked it off its app store and Amazon kicked it off. So it's not even really online right now, unless it is by now. I don't know. I don't use Parler. Um, when a social media site wants my phone number, eh, no, sorry. Uh, but anyway, this is... This is just going on in our world right now. I'm not going to spend a lot more time talking about it. You guys are probably sick of hearing about, about Parler and being kicked off. But I want to bring this up just because this is exactly antitrust. And yeah, we're not going to see anything about this because, you know, it has different different alignments than the powers that be. So, you know, government may not be able to censor you, but they censor you, but they're, they're paid off guys. Ah, not Gary. Put that thing in my Discord server again. It's creepy. And our final story today, a uh, an ISP in in Idaho blocks Facebook and Twitter citing censorship concerns. This is a glorious, glorious piece of trolling. This is the best trolling of 2021 so far. And I don't think there's going to be any trolling better than this because it got all sorts of people to jump down and talk about, but net neutrality, because guess what saved it? The net neutrality laws of the state. The thing we don't have on a federal level anymore. We've got to get rid of net neutrality. Companies won't do anything. So here's a company going, oh yeah, here's what here's what failure to have net neutrality laws have. Boom, we're going to ban Facebook and Twitter. Why? Because they're getting too many complaints from people. This is what they happen to say, or this is just a glorious article. North Idaho internet provider uh, has confirmed it is blocking Facebook and Twitter from its Wi-Fi service for some customers due to censorship claims. Uh, they provide internet services. Uh, let's see, your T1 Wi-Fi provides internet services to North Idaho and Spokane area. The move comes after Twitter and Facebook banned President Trump from their platforms due to the incitement of violence and undermining the transition of power. My Lance, can we stop talking about that stupid lying talking point? No, he did not incite anybody to violence, and no, he is not undermining his transition to power. In case you happen to miss the stupid kind of press conference that has been banned... He said, people, if you're violent, go home. You're not part of our cause. Do not do violence. And he said, I am going to commit to a peaceful transition of power. His exact words. Oh, my lands. But you can't hear those because they have been banned. My lands. You have to go find it on like bit shoot or something. You can actually hear what the president actually said. And it is not an incitement to violence. But anyway, I digress. Social media sites ban the president due to violation of terms of service because Twitter and Facebook are private companies. Their bans to the president do not violate the First Amendment, which protects uh, speech from being limited by the government. Their actions, however, could violate the state law. Well, T1 Wi-Fi is a private company. They can do what they want. Hmm. I know I just broke all those lefty minds out there, but come on. Your uh, T1 Wi-Fi said it decided to block Twitter and Facebook after the company received several calls from customers about both websites. It has come to our attention that Twitter and Facebook are engaged in censorship of our customers and information. An email to its readers rent. The service provider said the change would go into effect on Wednesday, January 13th. And an email post to, uh, posted to Twitter by customer Krista Yep, the company said it was fielding calls from customers asking that the service not display the sites on the internet and that they didn't want their children to be able to access them. There you go. And so 
of course they're coming out. Oh, my lands, we're, you're blocking this. It's the same thing like the, the Uganda election and the Ugandan government is blocking Facebook and Twitter and they're coming out saying, you can't silence us. You, if you silence us, you're, you're taking part in like, this violates the open internet. Like, The mental loops it takes to get into the mindset of these people is staggering. It's very interesting. So anyway, um, they're being saved by nothing more than a net neutrality law. So a net neutrality law may keep Twitter and Facebook on the internet. Kind of like that law that we said we kind of really need so the companies can't do this. And this raises some interesting points. Now, do I think it's an amazing thing? I think it's hilarious. If I were living in that area and I actually use Facebook and Twitter, I might be bummed. It doesn't look as though it's something that is blanket uh, disabled. It just looks like something some customers can disable. Basically call it parental filtering, I guess. But the point stands is this, is that when we are, when we're looking at these different things and we're looking at these different services and all these different factors coming into it, we have to understand you can't say it's a private company on this hand and then deny another private company for doing something on the other. You want to say, but Facebook and Twitter, they can, they can ban the president because they're a private company. Well, go tell that to the baker that you dragged through court because they didn't want to bake a cake for you. They're a private company as well. Do you want the private company to make their own rules or do you not? What about all the private companies that would really like to open their doors right now and make a living so they can pay their bills and be a productive member of society? They're a private company. Can they not do anything? These are the things we need to think about. This company here, they get the A plus 2021 award for the best troll of the year because they did an actual action thing which showed us the importance of net neutrality and got us talking once again brilliance brilliance kudos to you t1 wi-fi even if you're forced by your state's law to reinstate them this is a brilliant thing to do and i'm telling you guys <clears throat> perfect all right we're gonna go ahead and look at our smart tech next uh, before we get there, though, we have an affiliate in A2 Hosting. If you need a website, use my affiliate, tlm.li forward slash A2H. And uh, you can go ahead and um, uh, you can go ahead and use my code there. Get some shared hosting as little as $3 a month for your first term. And then it goes up to $11 a month. The prices did go up a little bit. And that's because cPanel jacked everyone's licenses up. My personal hosting fees are going to double. That's insane. Um, so that's unfortunately hurting all of us at this point. Uh, but nevertheless, that is actually across all companies as well. But you can use the uh, use the affiliate there. Get a uh, you can get three years up to three years of this. So if you knew, need this, the servers, you can get three years at three um, three dollars a month. Uh, pay that up front. So go ahead and do that. And uh, now we'll go ahead and have a look at our smart news. And onto our smart, these are very related to business, just a few new weird products. Um, the first, um, I was talking about holographic images earlier. LG imagines a bed with a hidden see-through uh, OLED TV set. So of course we, we had, uh, we first saw some of these OLED screens come up just recently where it's really getting to look like Star Trek now, right? Where you had the tele, the holographic monitors and things like that. So now this bed, so let's see if they have a picture here without, without sound. So you have this bed here and the, and, uh, it has this bed frame and the TV just kind of sits down there and then you push a little button and it uh, so you'll have your clock and your alarm and cool little neat stuff over here. But then when you want to watch TV, oh, there's some notifications and things. You can actually slide the bad boy up. And as you slide it up, now you have a full television there. Then you can see apparently right through it. So I can't tell if this is a TV with another TV behind it or what's going on in this deal. Uh, but the idea here is it's going to slide up and you have this see-through TV. This person really likes their television. They have a see-through TV and then a non-see-through TV right behind it. So this guy really likes their TV. Here's the other view of it. So definitely interesting. I, I'm kind of ambivalent about that one, but whatever. Um, 
Samsung has a new bot handy. It can put away dishes, set the table, and pour your wine for you. So here is the little robot. It'll basically go and pour you a glass of, a glass of wine, bring it on to you, because, yeah, the robots are going to come and kill us all, guys. Yeah, I don't want to hear you talking. I want to see creepy robots. Can I see creepy robots? Oh, Lord, there he is. So there we are, guys. We have little robots in here taking care of all of our basic household chores. I don't know. There's just something calming and relaxing about washing the dishes. I'm not really willing, willing to delegate to a robot. That's personally me. I don't know what you guys think. Uh, but there's that. And on to our final one. We have a new enticing soft serve pod ice cream machine. So you get the pods, you get all of the, uh, you know, you get the little pods over here, you put the pod in here, you push the little button, and then you get your little soft serve ice cream, and then you throw away your pot. Like, guys, why in the world is all this stuff coming out in this time when we're sitting here talking about waste, waste? I use a French press for my coffee, all right? On my French press, there is no waste. You got the coffee beans, which you can easily compost, recycle, and it's it's not like it's not throwaway waste. So I don't even use a coffee filter. Okay, I make my ice cream at home with raw ingredients. The milk and the cream I get from dairies that allow me to take my glass bottles back and refill my glass bottles. Okay. I just make my ice cream in my own dishes and I store them in my own freezable container. I generate almost no waste. Like if I didn't have two cats, I would have to throw, a, I would fill up a 13 gallon garbage bag. I think once a month is how much waste I generate. Like almost none. This is nonsense. On top of it being excessively expensive, this is just a, a commodity. You leave this along with every other giant machine. Like, imagine just seeing the picture if you had every one of these devices out. You would have like these piles and piles and piles of clutter just in all of the little devices that are totally unnecessary. Why in the world do we need something like this? Is it just to say what we can do? I, I, I Explain to me the logic of this. All right, this is silly enough, but let's just go ahead and uh, let's just go ahead and just get right on into Sillyville because this is just getting nonsense. And I should have just thrown that ice cream thing into the Sillyville. And so let's just go ahead and get going. Um, product of the year, I, I'm sensing this is going to be the number one product of 2021. For 50 bucks, these are clips. They are Bluetooth frame clips that you clip on the side of any sunglasses, I guess any, any eyeglasses that you have as well. So it puts little headphone speakers right next to your ears. Like, I'm still looking at this, fi figuring how in the world does this work? Because picture the way those are going. When you have your, and you're wearing your glasses, that frame part that that's connected to is up here. If that has to sit over your ear, it's going to be horribly uncomfortable. If it just sits in front of your ear and shoots this way in your ear, it's highly inefficient. This is weird, but okay. We have clip-on Bluetooth speakers now for your little sunglasses. They have a little charging ports. It is MagSafe charging. I do like the MagSafe charging. I guess these are replacement clips in case the clips break. Um, yeah, that's okay. Very good. I think all of our Sillyville is pretty much weird crap. Uh, number two, we have a flexible smartphone. The rollable. So notice it, it can be big, it can be small. Ooh, look at that, big and small. I guess you have to have special video to use it, I don't know. Look, it slides out and gets bigger. Whoa, whoa. Oh man, do we not have it? Okay, uh, oh, here you go. Oh, look at this, look at this. Look at this bad boy, oh yeah, oh yeah. Why? 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 God, why? 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 
Okay. All right. Okay. Now we get into the crazy things that COVID era gets us. All right. These came out. A couple companies came out with these at the same time. Touchless doorbell. Stand on the mat to ring the doorbell. So you come by, you stand on the mat. Oh, look at this. Don't touch the doorbell, but I have to click to interact. All right, let's click to interact. No, I don't want to hear you talking to me. So the idea is the person comes up. Oh, bing, bing, bing. My data collection gets a, a notification. There's somebody on the porch. Oh, look at this. Oh, look at this. Yay. Yay. Look at this. Uh, we get the biracial family coming by. Um, over here, we get uh, this. Oh, look at this mask du dude showing up. Oh, this must be your Uber delivers. Yeah, boom, thanks. You can leave my Uber delivers right there. I don't want to touch your nastiness. Oh, it's the bad dude. Ha, 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 run away. Ha, ha, bad dude, run away. That's like, okay, here's a thought. I, I just have a random thought, guys. I have a random thought. If you're all worried about the coof, and you're worried about touching the doorbell, maybe you shouldn't go to somebody's house. Just a thought. Just a thought. Just a thought. Um, but yeah, we, we have to have this perfectly sanitized, touchless society now, and it's becoming insane. I'm telling you, this is insane. What in the hell are we looking at? And now we have on to our glorious... Our Razor's Concept N95 mask with RGB voice projection. Yes, we have a mask that's N95 that will basically project your voice better. We should get one of these for Nancy Pelosi because every time she gets up to say something, I cannot hear her in that jumbly little mask because wearing a mask actually really jumbles what you have to say and I can't hear you. Would somebody please give one of these to Nancy Pelosi so when she's up there talking, I can at least understand what she's saying? I mean, really. Um, but let me talk about this real quick because in case you're not following all this mask nonsense, first and foremost... Um, the only study, the only random control study we have on masks uh, in the COVID era demonstrated that masks don't do anything. The, uh, there was a very good uh, study back in 2017 that the control group had fewer infections than the cloth masks. Cloth masks should never be seen. In 2003, when SARS was going out in Australia, people were fined $100,000 and sent to prison for telling people that wearing a mask would prevent, or business owners selling a mask, telling people that it would prevent the spread of SARS. And now everyone has to run around wearing a mask. But, 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 remember, the N95 mask filters the air coming into you. It doesn't do anything to the air going out. That's the way an N95 works. It filters the air coming in. Remember, the talking point is you wear the mask to prevent you spreading the illness to others. So an N95 mask in the COVID era makes no sense, even though it is the gold standard of masks. Go figure that logic out for me. You spin in circles, but, 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 no. The N95 mask does not filter any air going out. It just goes out. It only filters air coming in. So the N95 mask protects you. The cloth mask supposedly protects everybody else, but it actually infects everybody else. If you actually go and look up the mask data, everywhere mask mandates are put into effect, infections go up, not down. Everywhere mask mandates are not put into effect, infections stay relatively low. <gasps> Shocking. <laughs> Very interesting. So here is Razor capitalizing on the nonsense and the insanity of the mask debate and uh, giving us an N95 mask that is sure to infect everybody around you because the N95 mask does not do what the masks do, what they tell us to wear the mask for. So go figure this one out, folks. I I'm telling you, I'm telling you, we are in a crazy clown world and uh, the Sillyville is, uh, is demonstrating it. So anyway, thanks for watching, guys, and uh, let me know your thoughts on all these in the comments down below. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.